So we're working on a panel view 550, which is an older one, obviously, and ours is an A5, B5, A5. To find that out, we're in our panel builder software and we are gonna go to our communication setup. So we're gonna double click on that. And then it brings you up the communications that you're actually using. We're gonna hit cancel on this box. And then in the bottom right corner of this pop-up, you'll see there's a catalog and revision number. It's gonna tell you what you've got. Click on that. And that's what we're running right there. So there's our model number. Now I'm looking here because the back of our panel view is missing. There's, there's literally nothing there. So we don't have a model number to go off of. So that's what the program's written in. It's a 2711B5A5. And we're gonna go over setting up communications for this. You can see down here, the physical port is an RS-232. The protocol is DH-45. Um, and the 550s are a little bit different if you're trying to use this. So this is a Windows 10 machine, uh, and we're gonna go through what you need to connect to it. So the adapter we're using is uh, a USB adapter. It's hard to get these now. I had to custom order this one from Alan Bradley a while ago, but it is a 1747 UIC. And this one can do either RS-45, DH-45, or RS-232, DH-45. So you'll need this adapter. You'll have to have this switch down in this position so you're using this port. And then we're going to use a DB9 to DB9 cable. And the cat number on this guy is a 2711NC13. And if you look there, they do have a manual, but it'll walk you through all that stuff too. Um, all we want to do is download the application. We made some changes on the nomenclature. Um, and this is what you've got to do to communicate to it. So we're going to walk through a little bit of the setup of the communication port on this. So the first thing we're going to do is plug our USB into our computer and we're going to get it in there nice and deep like, oh dang, that's rough. It felt good though. So we're going to get our device manager up here so that we can look at what COM port that one is because I don't remember offhand. So we're going to go up here to device manager. If it's not in your list, you can just type in device manager and we're going to go to ports com and lpt if you double click on that or hit the arrow there's our usb to serial we'll double check it's it by unplugging it and then it should go away so you've got no common lpt and we'll plug it back in and it'll bring up our common lpt right there now that we've verified it's com4 we're going to go back to rs links and go to communications configure drivers and in our available driver type we're going to Click the drop down arrow and go to um, where is our DH485 UIC devices? Down through, yeah, up right there. That's the guy. We're going to hit add new. Doesn't matter what you name it, go ahead and hit OK. And then you're going to select whatever COM port it was, which is four on our, in our case, and then hit OK. Then hit close on this guy. And then you can open up your UA, UIC. You can expand that and plug into it. And we'll, um, we're going to go plug into the device now and uh, see if it, well, we'll bring up communications and make sure it talks to it. So you'll have that guy looking there, just like that. So when you get to right here, 
we disconnected, but that's because that's in production. We didn't want to download to it again. You'll select your communication that we just set up, and then when you hit OK, this one's probably going to give me an error, not going to do it. But it'll bring up the download dialog box. There you go. It's going to go through and check all this stuff. So ours isn't even going to identify the terminal, but normally you'll get a little green check mark through all of these, and it'll take a really long time to download. <laughs> so once you get the communication protocol set up right, as long as you've got your application done right, it'll go through all this, get green check marks, and you'll be done.